This is a video to Jobot, and I'm going to play a little clip of your video, Jobot. I hope you don't mind, but I don't want to take your words out of context. And um, so let's roll the clip. Biogenesis occurs because of naturally occurring chemistry. I mean, because of you've got anionine and thiamine, which occur naturally in the environment because of and things that just because of basic chemistry. Yeah. Then the, the, because there's certain types of enzymes in the soil, they join together in long chains. We know this happens. We've done it in the laboratory. These, these are, it's not complicated to understand. Right, it's a little bit complicated, but it, there's nothing magical or mystical about it. You're not getting something, not something coming out of nothing. You get basic chemistry occurs because of the correct conditions in the environment, and then you get amino acid chains. That's it. I'm Abiogenesis. What is that? I'm going to read you the description. In the natural sciences, abiogenesis, or the origin of life, is the study of how life on Earth could have arisen from inanimate matter. It should be not confused with evolution. There's the, there's a key point there. Um, which is the study of how living things change over time. Okay. So, we don't want to um, confuse evolution with abiogenesis, and I'll tell you why. Because evolution is sort of looking at things going backwards. And we say, okay, humans came from um, extinct ancestors that are also extinct ancestors to the chimps and the monkeys and, and that. And then they came from extinct ancestors of other smaller primates which came from extinct ancestors from uh, rats or rat-like ancestors and then the rat-like ancestors came from fish-like ancestors which came from uh, amoeba-like ancestors and oops stop stop there because it's starting to sound ridiculous if it didn't sound ridiculous already. Um, the scientific process here, what is that exactly? It's observing. It's not um, fantasy. So if you, um, if you take a chicken, it will have offspring that are chickens. Um, they may have different colors, just like we have different colors in the human race. But you're never going to be able to breed a, a duck and a chicken together and produce a, a viable offspring, if an offspring at all. And sometimes we have some, some uh, rare cases, you know, of animals that look similar, that actually produce a baby, but then it stops there. Let's say like the horse and the donkey. Um, we say, oh, they're in the same family, and they are able to interbreed, but their offspring, the mule, whether male or female, is sterile. And the, the bloodline stops there. There's, there's nothing more to that. Yet, um, with evolution, we're, we're told to believe that this long, huge chain from the amoeba to the human took place. It just needs enough time. These are naturally occurring processes that we never see. We never see them happen, um, but we just believe that. Is that really scientific? I mean, are we observing that? I, I don't think we're observing that. I think it's, it's a sleight of hand trick. So we want to keep abiogenesis out of evolution, which really life started from somewhere. I mean, if, if it was able to progress all these years, um, there had to be a start. And I, and I think, what is that start? Now, Joe Bot says that um, it's in the soil. It's just naturally um, things that are in the soil. Now, here's, here's where you have the, the cart before the horse. Now, you're saying it's just naturally occurring in the soil. Well, what is soil? Now, I'm going to give you a little description here. Of, of what soil is. Okay? We know less about the earth. 
and what is under our feet, then we do know about the far side of the moon. Why? Because the far side of the moon is sterile. There's nothing there. There is no life there, so there's nothing, nothing to study. Yet, every plant and animal you can think of depends on a vast ecosystem. This vast ecosystem, mm -hmm, one thing relies on another thing, but yet, Jobot says that these things will just pop into existence and they don't really, they just chemically react and they don't really rely on too much else. But this is a whole ecosystem. Each shovel of soil holds more living things than all of the human beings ever born. Lots of species are still waiting for scientists to identify them and name them. And that's the job that God gave Adam, was to name the animals and name what we see out here. And we're still doing that today. This is a world where fungi lie trapped under thread-like worms. Bacteria dine on toxic chemicals and smaller creatures, and the smaller the creature, the stranger its habits. Now, that's another thing. When we talk about evolution and how we can see evolution happen in, uh, you know, under the microscope, uh, our, we're talking about um, bacteria. And we would expect that bacteria would behave uh, very differently um, from humans. Same with viruses. Viruses would behave very differently from humans or a dog or a cat or um, any life form that has uh, legs and eyes. And, um, and yet we want to apply what we think we know about viruses to, um, to all of how human life got here. That sense a virus can mutate and change that that a, a, an animal can change from a a, a monkey-like creature to a human creature. Where is the scientific evidence for that? It's just not there. Sorry, Joe, it's not there. And, um, I mean, if we want to be honest and really use the scientific method... Um, I think we need to, to apply uh, the limitations that we see in the natural world. So if we're saying, well, it just came from the soil, what is that soil made of? It's made of um, lots of organic material, plants that have died and decayed, animal poop. You know, it's all, it's all in there, and that is necessary for a plant to grow. But if a plant is growing plants before it had to live. Now, it, it really makes the model, uh, the biblical model, more plausible because God created the whole ecosystem. God made a place for us to live, the animals to live. He put the stars in the sky and the moon and um, set things in place so that it would all work you know, it wasn't an accident. I mean, all this didn't happen by some just weird accident. Because what would have to be in place for this incredible accident to happen just by chance is just, it's too much to fathom. And you need to really consider um, that there is a designer behind all, all this. And um, even the fact that, you know, you have two eyes and, and, and two hands. There's design. You know, when we're not born with perfect hands, we see that something's gone wrong, you know, with the design. Because God put in each one of us, in our DNA, how to form. Now, sometimes that goes wrong, and we can look at... Um, really uh, what we're doing to our environment that will screw things up. But um, there is a plan, and when you vary from that plan, um, we have disaster. So what I'm trying to get to, uh, Joe Bot, is abiogenesis doesn't even really exist. Believe you.